What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I add a plane stop slash bench drop to my workbench. So this is a great little item for holding boards on top of your bench so you can plane the sides or the faces and in conjunction with a doe's foot at the back and a hold fast you can clamp just about anything to your bench without the need for any expensive voices. It works extremely well and it's extremely cost effective. So in this video we're going to build one from scratch from bits of scrap that I have around the workshop. I'll show you how to do it, show you how to fill it to your bench. I kind of came up with a different kind of style and an easier way to do it which I'll show you in this video. So it's absolutely fantastic bit of kit and when you're finished with it a couple of taps of the hammer and it's perfectly flush and out of the way so let's get on let's add and build a plane stop now just before we crack on, I want to very quickly thank Tradeify for sponsoring today's video. So Tradeify is a complete job management platform designed for self-employed tradespeople. So if you're in the trades and you spend all day on the tools and you're really struggling to keep on top of your office work, definitely check this out. I use it, I'm a self-employed electrician and I reckon it saves me about 8 hours a week in administration work alone. So I have no problem recommending it to you guys. It's everything from invoicing to quoting to scheduling and so much more. It even ties in with your accounting software at the end of the year. Streamlines the whole process generates professional looking uh, documents and takes the headaches out of that office work and believe me I know what it's like to be on the tools all day and struggle to keep on top of it so definitely check it out I'll link it below there's a 14 day free trial there's no strings attached you can play around with the full job management platform and see how it works for you and there's also a promo code man in shed which will give you 50% off for your first three months so if you're in the trades struggle with that office stuff Get down there, definitely check it out. Now let's get a plane stop into this bench. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to use for this little project. And I'm going to try and keep this extremely simple so there's going to be no chopping of a big mortise all the way through the bench. I do not need to do that. I could use this two inch piece of maple so it's two inches by two inches or 50 by 50 and mortise this all the way through the bench and knock this up and down, but I'm not going to do that. So I've chopped a little bit off the end of it. This is a two inch cube or a 50 mil cube, so it's 50 by 50 by 50. And I'm going to set that down into the workbench. So I'm only cutting the full depth of this into the workbench because it will never be more than an inch of this sticking above the workbench anyways. And that's plenty. Having an inch below the surface is more than enough to um, use as a plane stop. An inch of material in there would be plenty strong to plane against. So I'm going to drill in a 25 mil or one inch oak down into the end of this, drill a hole straight through my worktop and shove this down through it and use this for knocking up and down my planing stop. So that kind of speeds the whole process up and makes it a lot simpler. And for the teeth then we're going to use a piece of angle iron I have here. So we'll cut this up and we'll foil in some teeth into this and we'll recess a piece of that into the top of our maple block here and that will sit flush with our tabletop. So let's get on and do it. Okay, first thing I want to do is recess this oak dowel into the bottom of our block. So let's do that. Just join the corner so we can find the center. So just join corner to corner and that will give us the exact center. So line there. Line there. And there's our center. So we'll drill that now on the drill press with a 25 mil forstner bit. We need to go into about three quarters of an inch or 20 mil. That will be more than enough. And uh, we won't glue it in place yet. We just set it in place and then we can use that to mark our top. Okay, 25 mil hole in the end of our block. So I'm going to put a little chamfer in the end of the dowel, just to help seat it in there. Just roll off that corner with the chisel. See how that fits. Okay, that is extremely tight, so I don't want it to blow my block apart. A little bit of sandpaper. A little twist. Okay, that'll be happy days. Now we're perfect, so we have a perfect fit. So, again, I don't want to stick that in there and we're not going to glue it home just yet. So that's going to essentially be our planing stop, nice and simple. So, we're going to drill our hole down through our bench now and we can use that dowel to line up our block. We can mark our block and then we can cut it in. Let's do that. 
Okay, nice sharp 25mm auger bit in the drill. I'm going to use two squares so I can keep my drill perpendicular to my bench. So I just have them set up here so I can just eyeball off the squares in both directions. And I'm going to use the center line of my 4x2 to um, start off my bit. So down, straight down between two of the uh, boards. So we just line that up. Eyeball it, I can see both squares are looking pretty good. Take it nice and slow. The chippings just knocked over that square, but that's looking good and straight there. And that's looking good and straight there. So let's go. Come down the torque. Lovely jubbly. Okay, let's check and see how we did. It did move a little bit. It's always hard to hold it by hand, especially when the auger bit grips, but that's not too bad there. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and not too bad that way either. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. The start square says that's pretty square, so not too bad for doing it by hand and just eyeballing it in. And it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. Now, I can now use this to put my piece onto my bench. Just keep it square with the edge of the bench. and We can mark this then for our mortise to chop it in. So there we go, that's nice and square. Okay, that's our mortise marked out. Let's start chopping. Okay, so we can begin chopping. I'm just gonna sight down the chisel so I can see that that's nice and perpendicular to my bench. Give it a nice little tap. I just want to create a wall for my chisel to run down, so I don't want to hit it too bad hard because the bevel on the chisel can drive it back out of your wall and you don't get good clean lines. So once you've established a wall all the way around and it's nice and perpendicular, it's pretty easy then to work your way on down. So we'll just check the fit and see how we're going. Lovely. All right, I'm only down about five mil and that's already snug as a bug in the rug, as they say. So that's gonna be a nice tight fit, which is exactly what we want because we don't want it slipping up and down. So I get on and chop this down now. I've got 50 mil or two inches to go, just working my way down. And when that's done, we'll jump back in. Okay, so here we go. One chopped mortise, and that is sitting in there nice and snug, so it's good and tight. So, it needs to be hammered pretty solidly down into the bench, so it's good and stiff, which is exactly what you want, because you don't want your block falling down when you're trying to put your uh, piece that you're planing against it. Then it's just a case of, tap under the bench to raise it up. Now, it's good and solid. So next we want to do now is make the teeth for our um, planing stop. So we're gonna make that out of the angle iron. Let's do that. Okay, first thing I wanna do is just square off the end of this. Where's my scribe? There it is there. So I'm gonna square off this angle iron. So we can cut this with the hacksaw now. And the head of our block is 47 millimeters exactly. So we wanna cut this exactly the same. Okay, that's exactly what I need to cut, right there and right there. Lovely. 
Okay, so here's what we're looking at. I've just cut a kind of rectangular piece out of that angled iron and I've marked in a tooth pattern here. They're roughly five mil uh, in width at the bottom of the teeth, just a triangular pattern there. I'm going to have to file this out. So that's going to sit on the edge of our block like that. Now I need to put a bevel on this side. So just like say a plain blade or a chisel, I want the bevel facing down so that the piece, it catches the piece that you're planing against and it drives it down into the table. So that's the idea. So I've got to put a bevel on this side and then we've got to file out these teeth. So let's do that. Just work it in the back bevel on it here. I'm doing it on the side of the voice because the voice is really in the way. The piece is kind of small, so I can't get the angle because I'll be filing the front of the voice. So I'll do this side, uh, catch it on that side of the voice, and then finish off this side. If you had a bench grinder, you could do this, but you'll do it quite quickly with a hand foil too. Okay, so now that I have the bevel established back here, I want to start foiling in the teeth. So I just got to be sure that I take off the right amount. So I have a triangular foil here. I'm just going to put the point in between my teeth, foil down, move to the next, foil down, foil down, and foil down, and so on. And just to make sure that I'm moving the exact same amount of material at each place. So let's get on to that. Okay, so now that I've pretty even with the triangular foil, I've just got to foil down the outside edges to uh, get the outside teeth established. And that's just using the flat foil again to do that. Okay, so we have our tooted piece cut now. That's the piece that's going to grip our material. Like I said, we have a bevel on one side, which is going to face down. So when our material hits this, it'll be pushed down into the bench. So we've got to recess this piece now into our block. So I've just marked where I want it to be. I've just set the depth on my marking gauge. I've pulled the line across and just slightly down the side, just like that. Now I'm going to set the depth of this piece. Let's just drop that down. Drop the marking gauge on it. That'll set the exact depth of that. And I can pull that down the front here then and down the sides. Okay, that is that piece marked out so we can see exactly what we need to cut now. Let's chop this piece out then. We can get pretty close to our marking gauge line and finish it off with the chisel. I'm just going to screw on our teeth and I'm going to leave uh, the kind of patina look on it. So I'm not going to paint this or anything. I like the kind of worn look. I've just drilled two pilot holes down into the timber. And we'll screw this home. And then we can hit the whole lot with a little boiled in seed oil, including the metal. That'll stop it from rusting and give it a nice kind of a rustic look, which is what we want. Now, I have to cut a recess for the teeth. So I'm just going to tap this down into the bench so that I can mark them. Okay, so that's a pretty snug fit there, which is exactly what we want. And I just want to mark a cross in front of the teeth here. So we're going to cut a recess for them.
guys, there we go, one planing stop all finished. Now it's sitting nice and flush just below the surface. You're not gonna catch your hands on those teeth because you could get a nasty uh, tear off them if they were slightly protruding, but they're not, they're nice, they're just below the surface. So there's no danger of anything being caught there, which is exactly what you want. Now it's nice and quick and easy to use. So the beauty of the planing stop is all you're gonna do is tap it up run your piece against it, it's nice and held. Now obviously, you make sure that you're putting the waist piece against those teeth, and it's not a finished board with a finished end on it that you're trying to plane down, because you will be leaving teeth mark in the end of your board. But I can grip it for you nice and easy, and you can plane away nice, quick, no voice required. So even though I do have a wagon voice or tail voice here, sometimes it's nice and just be able to quickly put a block against it and do some planing. Now, something else you can also make to go along with your planing stop. I believe it's called a doe's foot. So it's literally just a 90 degree cut in the end of a bore like that. So it's just a V, that's a, literally 90 degrees. And that goes onto your back of your piece like that. And with a hole fast, you can hammer that in place. And you can use this principle to hold any boards as wide as you want. And that is locked in there now, not going anywhere. No voice required. So it's a really nice, simple little tool. It was kind of, I suppose, a mainstay of really old time um, woodworking benches. I don't see why you shouldn't add one to your bench, especially because it's nice and simple and easy to do. And if you're not chopping the mortise all the way through with a dowel, uh, it's quite a quick job indeed. A little bit of foiling by hand and you have yourself a plain stop and uh, no expensive hardware or voices required. Cut yourself a doe's foot, hold fast, and now you can work on any size board on its face and on its sides, uh, nice and easy. So there you go. Okay guys, so there we go. We have now added a planing stop or bench stop to this bench. And like I said, it's a great addition. And to be able to make it yourself with that, it's literally made out of spare parts that I had here in the workshop. So it didn't actually cost anything. And with a doe's foot and a hole fast, you essentially can clamp nearly anything in any which way to your workbench. So if you're getting started into woodworking and you're worried about the prices of different voices and tail voices and face voices and all that stuff, don't worry. There's many different ways to clamp work to a workbench. I recommend hole fast, nice and cheap. Make yourself a plain stop like that and uh, a doe's foot like I said just a 90 degree cut in the end of a board it's like a bird's mouth for all the world is another thing I've heard it called and uh, that will hold any size board you want to your workbench so great idea and very cost effective and hopefully you have enjoyed it guys and if you have give it a thumbs up and if you're new here think about subscribing comments and questions below as always I do my best to get back to everybody thanks to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel very much appreciate it guys so that's it um Pretty happy with how that turned out. Nice and sitting flush with the top of my workbench now, a planing stop. Now one thing I should mention, I didn't put it to the end of my bench. Normally that's exactly where they go, is right to the end of your bench, so you can get the full length of your bench. It's just planing past the face voice uh, tends to damage the hip if you bang yourself off that. So I stopped it just short of my um, face voice. That's why it's not at the end of my table. You guys can, by all means, can put it right to the end of your table if that's what you wanna do. And I can also use it now in conjunction with my wagon voice. So I can use my wagon voice to clamp things against my planing stop as well which gives me extra grip so that's it guys uh, i'm gonna get out of here now hopefully you've enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one take it easy